is the outfit, how it fully came together. I think it's really, really pretty. It is everything she's giving, okay? Make it look like I got a booty too. She got a don't. She got a don't, okay? Like, it's giving booty. <laughs> and I just have my machino belt on. So I have the belt on. I wore my LVs because, you know, we're going to an event at Neiman Marcus. Got my Pradas on, of course, because they're my new glasses. That's why I'm wearing the new ones. And my scent, I went with the Mason Francis Kirkajon. I'm probably saying that wrong. Paris. And this is Gentle Fluidity Gold. Kiko Beauty put me onto this one, and it is so good. It's like a sweet scent. It's like a sweet cotton candy, but in a grown-up way. The way she said it is the perfect way to describe it, because that's what it is. Like, it is super good. <laughs> I like this one a lot. So I'm excited uh, for the event. I have no idea about a purse at all. Like, I don't even have a gold purse. No, I don't. I don't have a gold purse. What am I going to do? Oh, gosh. And I'm wearing my Tory Burches. Um, but check this out. Let me show you this purse and see if it goes. I have two options. I can wear this purse right here. This is a Louis Vuitton bag I got from Fashion File. I think it is super cute. I think it will go with it because the shoes I'm wearing, let me just show you guys the shoes. They're my Tory Burches because these Tory Burches go with everything. I swear they are. <laughs> they do. And they're super comfortable. So yeah, that matches perfectly together with the shoes and just ties everything in if I wore the LV. Or I can go with this one. This one is like such a little cute, just clear thing. Like, I don't know, I really like this. I think she's cute. And I just have um, the coconut candy apple in here right now. And I don't know, she would be cute just to be like, okay, I have something, you know what I mean? But she is an LV and it's like, hello, I'm her, I have arrived. And she's like, what's good, you know what I mean? But I wanna be like, hello, is it me you're looking for? Let me stop. <laughs> but no, seriously, I think I'm gonna go with this one. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know, but I'm really feeling this one because I haven't worn this bag in like six months. So I think I'm gonna wear this one because I haven't worn it in six months and I just worn this one, wore this one to Rupert. So I'll wear this one today. So I'm oh, so excited. This is gonna be so much fun. And I think it's funny because like I'm into this stuff now and it's so much fun to me. And it's just like, I feel like I'm not the typical look for people that like stuff like this, I don't know. I just feel like there's a certain look and I don't have that look. But it could just be me and how I feel about things because I feel like, I don't know. I just don't have that look. Like I see a lot of the luxury girls, especially a lot of the black girls in luxury. And I'm like, I don't look like them. I don't look like them because I don't. I look, but I look like me. And that's what's important. Everybody should look like themselves. and. This is me, and this is what I look like, and I like nice things too. So, yeah, I emptied everything out except for bath and no, let me take my bath and body coupons. What if I just happen to stop there? And if I don't got my coupons, then what? I can't get nothing. So, you know, I always be thinking about my little coupons. So, yeah, this is the look. Let's go get mama and let's get to the event. So I'm in traffic right now, guys. I'm on my way to get my mama so we can uh, head out there. Um, I don't know what to expect. My mom said she's been in stuff like this before, so she knows all about it because my Aunt Thelma is super, she was super bougie. She actually passed away um, from cancer, um, I think like maybe five years ago or so. But um, 
she is she was extremely bougie like I know where the bougie comes from in my family and it's from her okay and she was the educated bougie she wasn't just talking about that she was a school teacher she met Bill Clinton everything she even had in her house her letter from Bill Clinton going over how they were congratulating her for all these different studies and all this stuff like that so like she was bougie but she was the educated bougie okay not bougie with bags only okay so <laughs> um, my mom used to go to events like and stuff like that with her and I'm just like oh yeah I used to have fun fun huh nobody thought of me but I didn't live in Buffalo I don't think at the time when they was doing all this stuff so I think it's cool to be able to go and do this with my mom and kind of like continue my aunt my well she's like my great aunt um it's tradition and I think that's gonna be pretty cool uh to continue what she was doing you know <laughs> um and it's funny because my glasses are even like the glasses she wore. So it's like, I'm a lot like my Aunt Thelma. Like, a lot like my Aunt Thelma. But she was tall. Like, my mom's side of the family. The funny thing is my mom's short. And her mom's short. But everybody else, they tall. Like, over six feet. Over six feet, over 600 pounds. Like, big, big people. Like, seriously. Like, they, they are. And, um, you know, she got the short jeans she gave it to me too i'm taller than her thank god i got that from my daddy um i'm at least five three and a half you know <laughs> but um yeah they, like they're short and then my, the whole family's tall except for my mom and her mom um i thought that was so funny uh so anyway anyway i'm headed over here to my mom and like, I ain't even gonna cap, like, just bringing up the memories. I miss my brother. Because I remember all the things we used to do with my Aunt Thelma, my cousin Mike, and everybody, and all the Christmases, and all the holidays, and all the just going over there to hang out. I really, I miss my brother. But, um, he's always gonna be in my heart, you know? And the crazy thing is, I had a dream the other night. And in the dream, my brother said, I'm coming back, sis. I'm coming back. So, I just feel like he's in my heart. And he's always going to be in my heart. Forever. Like, forever until I see him again. Because I'll see him again. Because we can't stay here forever. Even though we want to. And I think that's the hardest thing for me to realize. Is that we're not gonna be here forever, and I don't want to accept that one day I'll leave. But you have to accept that we're all here to leave. But it's what you do with the time that you're here that matters. So, I'm trying to make the most of the time I have here, not act a fool now, but be a positive influence, a positive thing. So when I go meet God, God gonna be like, so what did you do? How are you, my servant? And I can come with a good word. And here go my mom calling me now already. I told you she was going to. The upper echelon is here. Oh, look at that. I'm going to take a picture. Yeah, right. You better get away from the people's car.
goodness. So my very first buying job, I was the Chanel ready to wear buyer. So I have to say, I've parted with a couple of Chanel pieces, but that is just one thing. Yeah. But I just, listen, ladies, please don't get me wrong because there are <laughs> special pieces and it could be, there's one other piece, there's a couple of other pieces in my wardrobe, like my grandfather's old sweater. Oh. I mean, I, you can't get away, you can't throw away an heirloom. Mm -hmm. So I have a couple of vintage pieces that were my great grandmother's and then some special pieces that I have procured along the way being a buyer. Fantastic. My office, uh, there's five young ladies that are underneath me in my office or with me, please forgive me. They're side by side, it takes a team in a village. And we had this conversation, I said, so ladies, what do you want to be wearing for spring? And then we kind of dialed back a moment, what do you want to be wearing for fall? And each of them had said to me, I would like to start building my classic wardrobe. What did we negate? the last 18, almost two years was some of our classic wardrobe and sure. some of our modern pieces that we can infuse with everyday wear or make it special and have it um, for an event. And so we talked about some really, really amazing classics, but also one of the other key things is, we've all learned this at some point in time. You just said it sitting here. I don't really need one more thing. <laughs> it's not a matter of you needing. That's it's a true. matter of you wanting. <laughs> yes. And what I want to bring to you is that there are some really artisan collector pieces that you actually have to have because those would become the wardrobes, the items in your wardrobe that you won't want to get rid of. Yeah. There will be something not super awesome. comfortable. Gone are those days, ladies. You can look fantastic and fabulous in anything and everything, and you do not have to be uncomfortable. So when, when you're uncomfortable, what happens is you start to concentrate on that and you forget everything else that's around you, right? Mm -hmm. So you miss out on the small moments. We wanna take in every moment of the day and every moment of what's happening in our lives. So sometimes that's a distraction. How do you do it? <laughs> you just experiment. You yeah. just try it out. You go in your closet and you try things out. And like if your daughters say, uh-uh, mom, then you're like, okay, I'll take some of your advice. They, they know a lot of things, so. Yeah. Yeah, you just, I did a lot of experimenting and just having fun. And what I had told you in the back was, my mom, um, this is one of the biggest things. My mom, when I was growing up, she allowed me to be me and she allowed me to just kind of be myself and not try and help make me fit into anything or anybody and I really didn't I was always kind of on the other side and didn't I didn't care that I didn't fit in because she helped me to feel comfortable that I was different mm -hmm. and that I was myself and so she the one mm -hmm. thing that she said to me when I was younger she said it is better to be a copy uh, better to be an original than a copy mm -hmm. and right. that stuck with me for the rest of my life I mean right. I've raised with that and so that was part of where it came from. It was like she gave me the permission and then I just said, okay, I'll be happy.
Thank you.